Today's show is about high pressure versus low pressure tanks. I get emails all the time. Mike, should I pick up a high pressure or a low pressure tank? I'm going to tell you the whole reason the low pressure tanks came about was back, I believe it was in 2005. Angel came out with a regulator that, for whatever reason, the internals, how they designed it, was not meant to work with a standard tank that puts out 850 psi. Okay, so some manufacturers came out with a low pressure tank to work with that angel, and the craze has begun. I'm going to tell you the difference between the two right off the bat. High pressure tank, like this custom product. High pressure tank, this stores 4,500 psi in here, and the regulator puts out 850 psi, which is about what CO2 puts out. 850 psi. Here's a crossfire, low pressure tank. 4,500 psi back here. The regulator puts out 400 and 450 psi. Okay, so that's when we talk about the difference between high pressure and low pressure tank. Now, I'm going to tell you that right off the bat, here's an alias that I have probably close to a little over 200 cases through it using a high pressure tank. And my regulator still works perfectly. I know there's a myth out there that says, well, if you use a low pressure tank, it's going to be easier on your regulator. I have not found that to be true. That's using custom products regulators. It's using Bob Long regulators, using just about any other regulator I could possibly think of, MacDev or you name it. I have not found at all ever over the 18 years that I've been playing um, that high pressure tanks are bad on paintball regulators and low pressure tanks are easier on regulators. As a matter of fact, I found that low pressure tanks, if you're not careful, if you do not have your system set up properly, will actually can and will cause drop off on certain tanks. PMI Pure Energy, not Crossfire. Let me tell you one of the things that I've seen that you have to be really careful about if you are using a low pressure tank. I don't think you can see that. On the outside, this looks like two of the same type of macro line, two same pieces. But if you look at the holes here, the holes are very, very small on one side, and the other one is very, very big. Okay, I can take the back of this Q-tip, and I can stick it into this macro line, no problem at all. The hole is very big. This is ideally what you would want to use if you're using a low pressure tank. You need to get as much air to your regulator as quickly as possible. This hole is very, very small. I can't get the um, stick to go into this one. This type of macro line with a low pressure tank can mean a lot of trouble. So if you're using a low pressure tank, be very careful at the type of macro line that you're using with your gun. Make sure that you have a nice size hole, like what you can see here, something that you can stick a nice size Allen key into, not the super tiny hole like what you see here. I believe this kind of macro line is more meant for CO2. This is more meant for high pressure air, the bigger hole. Okay, another, another thing we're gonna talk about is when you have a low pressure tank, what's the advantage of having a low pressure tank? Like I said, over the years, I've never seen a low pressure tank be easier on the regulators. Doesn't happen, okay? Until somebody tells me otherwise that it happens or can, and it can provide me proof of a reg that's got 500 cases on it through a high pressure regulator and the reg just blew up, okay? Doesn't happen. Low pressure regulators are not easier on regulators. Doesn't happen, okay? I have found that low pressure tanks are easier to screw into a direct mount ASA like a critical or let's say uh, like a smart parts dovetail or something like that because it's less pressure as you're screwing it in. It is easier to screw in and out of the ASA using a low pressure tank if this is your favorite kind of ASA. Um, high pressure tanks are just a little bit harder, they're a little, a little more snug when you're screwing them in and screwing them out. But I will also tell you that High pressure tanks can be used on more guns. One, high pressure tanks can be used on every single paintball gun that's made today. This includes all the electronic guns, the Egos, the Intimidators, the Marks, the, uh, the Die guns, and on top of that, they also work perfect on Spiders, they work on Titmans, they work on Piranhas, they work on all the low end mechanical guns as well. So high pressure tanks are gonna have a much higher resale because there's more people that can use them as opposed to a low pressure tank yeah, it will work on an electric gun, but you cannot use this on a Titman, you cannot use this on a Spider, and you cannot use this on any other sear tripping type gun, because those guns are designed to run at 850 PSI, not 450 PSI. So, people ask me all the time, Mike, should I get a high pressure or a low pressure tank? Just get the high pressure tank. Just get the high pressure tank, all the guns work perfectly on it, and you'll have no issues whatsoever. Low pressure tank, 
There's really no advantage to owning one. It's not going to be easier on your rig. And if you do own a low pressure tank, be very careful and make sure that the macro line that you've chosen will give your gun enough air to get into the regulator. Um, but hopefully this clears up the confusion between low pressure tank and a high pressure tank. When, it, when in doubt, get the high pressure tank, 850 PSI. It works with everything. If you have a low pressure tank, congratulations, I've got one too. Your reg is not going to last any longer at all. Thank you very much.